Hi all, today's the third part of our lessons on concentration. We're going to be dealing specifically with molar concentration or amount concentration, which is the amount in moles of solute dissolved per liter of solution. So in here, if we have molar concentration, it is equal to our amount of solute in moles divided by volume of solution in liters. Okay, we can rewrite this equation um, to be capital C is equal to N over V. Okay, so going through here, big distinction, the previous C's that we were dealing with were lowercase. Okay, so for molar concentration, it will be a capital C. And the units are gonna be moles per liter. Okay, now you'll notice over here, there's another notation that's used, capital M. So we can use moles per liter or capital M, which means molar concentration, okay? Now, that's not to be confused with molar mass, okay? So if we see capital M as a unit, that means molar concentration, okay? And we know that chemistry likes to confuse us with the similarity between a lot of the different um, terms that we're using, okay? So just to keep it simple, use moles per liter, but know that the units can also be written as capital M, meaning molar concentration. Okay? If we're looking at here, so big C is equal to N over V, where N was our amount of substance in moles, okay? So M O L and V is our volume. Now it's really important that the value for this is in liters, okay? So if we're given a question where we're told that the volume of the solution is in milliliters or any other unit, we will have to convert it into liters. So let's try a sample problem. So in here it says, in a quantitative analysis, a stoichiometry calculation produced 0.186 moles of sodium hydroxide, excuse me, in 0.250 liter of solution. And we're asked to calculate the molar concentration of sodium hydroxide. So if we look in the question, we're told that we have 0.186 moles of sodium hydroxide. Our volume is 0.250 liters. And we're asked to solve for the molar concentration. Okay. We know that molar concentration is equal to N over V. So we can just plug in our values. We have 0 0.186 moles, and we're dividing that by 0 0.250 liters, and we get a concentration of 0 0.744 moles per liter. Okay, This notation that I'm using here, where I'm using minus 1, is just another way of writing moles per liter okay and then over here i just used capital m which is molar and both of them can be used interchangeably and it's really whatever you're most comfortable with all right if we look at the next question here we're told we're asked to calculate the number of moles of hcl present in 500 mils of 2.0 mole per liter hydrochloric acid we have our volume but notice how this is given in milliliters, so we need to convert it into liters. Okay, so we're dividing that by 1,000. Our molar concentration is two moles per liter. Okay, we're trying to solve for our N, our amount of substance. So if we rearrange our equation, we get N is equal to C times V. And now we just need to multiply the numbers together. So we have 2.00 moles per liter times 0 0.0500 liters and we get our amount of substance of 0 0.100 liters. And that matches the number of sig figs that we should have. Now these questions are pretty straightforward when we're just given concentration, volume, or moles. But what we're gonna find is that when we're actually carrying out experiments in the lab, we can't actually measure moles. And we typically measure mass, uh, we measure volume. So we need to find a way to be able to convert between mass, volume, concentration. Okay, so this is where we're gonna introduce some of the other equations that we've been dealing with. Okay, because we're gonna find that we're gonna use molar concentration in stoichiometry-based calculations. And we'll see that in later lessons. So do you guys remember the relationship between mass, molar mass, and moles? If you're thinking N is equal to mass divided by molar mass, you got it. Okay, so now 
this means we can actually combine some of the equations that we've learned about. Okay, so how are all of these concepts related? If we look, we've learned several different equations that allow us to calculate for the mole, our amount of substance. Okay, where n, our amount of substance, is equal to mass divided by molar mass. Okay, where we get our molar mass from our periodic table. Okay, and the values for that, the units for that are going to be grams per mole. Okay, our mass is it going to be in grams, as we indicated over here. We just learned our equation that molar concentration is equal to N divided by V. So I can incorporate that into this triangle. And we also know that our amount of substance is equal to the number of entities divided by Avogadro's number, which is 6.02 times 10 to the 23. Okay, we're going to find that for these types of problems, we're typically only going to be using this part of the triangle, okay, when we're dealing with molar concentration. Okay, so we're going to be given a mass and asked to solve for a concentration or volume, or asked or given a concentration and volume and asked to solve for mass. And we're going to notice that we have moles in the middle, and we're going to use that as a bridge just like we did when we were converting between mass and number of entities. Okay, so we're gonna try two or three sample problems to try to get some practice on using these formulas. So in the question here, it says sulfuric acid is a solution of hydrogen sulfate, H2SO4 and water. When concentrated, it is extremely corrosive. A 25 mil sample of concentrated sulfuric acid contains 44 grams of hydrogen sulfate. And we're asked to calculate the molar concentration. Okay. So if we look in the question, we're told that our volume of solution is 25.0 milliliters. We need to convert that right away to liters, okay? Because whenever we're dealing with molar concentration, it's in liters, so we're dividing it by 1,000. We're told that our mass of solute is 44 grams, okay? And we're asked to solve for molar concentration, okay? So let's look at our chart over here. Okay, so we're given volume, we're given mass, and we're asked to solve for molar concentration. Okay, so if we think about that, how can we get there? We can work our way from the top down. Okay, looking at this, we can solve for our molar mass using the periodic table. And we're going to put in the molar mass for H2. SO4. So we're going to do 2 times hydrogen's molar mass plus sulfur and 4 times oxygen. When we do that, we'll get 98.09 grams per mole. Okay, so now looking at this, we now have our molar mass, okay, which gives us a little bit of a clearer route. Okay, so we know our molar concentration. Okay, so our first step is to solve for our number of moles using mass divided by molar mass. Okay, so here we're using N is equal to mass divided by molar mass. So we're taking 44 grams and dividing it by 98.09 grams per mole. And we're getting 0 0.448568 moles. Okay, so this gives us now N. Okay, we have our volume, so we can solve for molar concentration by dividing our moles by our volume. Okay. And if we look here, C is equal to N divided by V. So we're taking the number that we got and dividing it by 0 0.025 liters. And we get 17.943 moles per liter. And because we were only given two significant digits, 144 grams, we're going to round this to 18 moles per liter. Okay, let's try sample problem 13. Household chlorine bleach is 0 0.067 moles per liter solution of sodium hypochlorite, NaClO. What mass of sodium hypochlorite is required to prepare 225 milliliters of bleach? I'd like you to pause the video and see if you can try this on your own. Now, in here we're told molar concentration. 
So that's told here, 0 0.067 moles per liter. We're told a volume, 225 milliliters. We need to convert that to liters by dividing by 1,000. Okay. Now, if we look at our chart, we know C, we know V, and we're asked to solve for our mass. Okay. So as we're going through, we can work our way up, solve for moles, and then we can figure out our molar mass using the periodic table, and then go up to solve for mass. Okay, so if we were to go and do uh, the molar mass for sodium hypochlorite, it would be 74.44 grams per mole. We're asked to solve for our mass. Okay, so our first step here is to solve for moles using C times V. Okay, so we have N is equal to C times V, so we're taking 0 0.067 moles per liter times 0 0.255 liters and we get 0 0.017085 moles. Okay, so now we know our number of moles, we have our molar mass, we can solve for mass by multiplying these two together. Okay, so if we take our molar mass and multiply it by our moles, 74.44 grams per mole times 0 0.017085 moles, we get 1.2718 grams. Because we're given two significant digits in the problem, we're gonna to round to 1.3 grams. So to make up a 0 0.067 mole per liter solution of bleach with a volume of 225 milliliters, we would need 1.3 grams of sodium hypochlorite. Now we're gonna go through one more problem and we're gonna see that this is gonna have a little bit of a twist. And it's gonna to bring together some concepts that we learned uh, in topic one on uh, dissociation. So in here it says, if 10 grams of NaOH is dissolved in water, the volume is made up to 200 milliliters, we're asked to calculate the molar concentration of sodium and hydroxide ions, okay? So if we look at this, we're told our mass, which is 10 grams. We know our volume, which we're told here, is 200 milliliters. We need to convert that to liters by dividing by a thousand, okay? As we're going through, I'm just gonna click a few slides ahead. We're trying to solve for the concentration of sodium and hydroxide ions, okay? But in here, we need to solve for the concentration of sodium hydroxide first, okay? So we're gonna get our big C and then we're gonna go and try to solve for our concentration of sodium and hydroxide, okay? So if we look at the information that we're given, we know our mass. We can get our molar mass from the periodic table and that's 40.0 grams per mole. We know our volume, okay? And we're trying to get to molar concentration, okay? So we can go and solve for moles by using mass divided by molar mass. We do 10 grams divided by 40 grams per mole. We get 0 0.25 moles. So now we have our moles over here. Okay, now we can solve for concentration by doing N divided by V. And we do 0 0.25 moles divided by 0 0.2 liters, and we get 1.25 moles per liter. Okay, but now in here, this is the concentration of NaOH in the solution. Okay, but what we got to remember is that NaOH will actually dissociate because it is aqueous. Okay, so in here it's asking for the concentration of each of these respective ions. Okay, so we need to do one more step. So in here, we need to think, okay, so NaOH, when it's dissolved in water, will dissociate into Na plus aqueous and OH minus aqueous. So to determine the concentration, we need to use our mole ratios, okay? So going through, we know the concentration of NaOH is 1.25. So now we're going to try to work our way through this equation to solve for the concentration of Na and hydroxide. Okay, so what's our mole ratio between NaOH and Na plus? It's one to one. So we're gonna take our 1.25 moles per liter NaOH multiply it by one mole of sodium and divide by one mole of NaOH. 
and then we're going to get our molar concentration of sodium ions which is going to happen to be the same it's 1.25 moles per liter okay, and we're going to do the same thing for hydroxide our mole ratio between sodium hydroxide and hydroxide is one to one so we're going to take 1.25 moles per liter multiply it by one mole of hydroxide over one mole of NaOH we get 1.25 moles per liter of hydroxide okay so this adds a little bit of a twist and we will be going through several problems in class to practice this uh, particularly for dealing with dissociation so that's all I really wanted to go through for today you can look through the rest of the sample problems I do have the full solutions in the teacher note and if you have any questions let me know we will be going through them in detail during class